everybody, this is Lindsay from Winding Road Crochet and today I'm going to show you how to line a crochet blanket with fabric. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell to be notified of future videos. You can also follow me on Instagram and Facebook. So if you're new to sewing fabric onto crochet, I highly recommend you try a sample piece like I'm showing here just to get the hang of it first. Another thing I recommend is take the yarn that you are working with, that your blanket's made of, make a little sample piece and run that under your sewing machine. Now, if you don't want to do this with a sewing machine, that's completely fine. I will link to a hand sewn tutorial later in the video after we go through the starter steps. But it is important to try a sample on your yarn to make sure it's not going to snag your yarn and it will help you decide what kind of stitch you want to use. In my case, I had to pick a much larger stitch because it came up with really teeny tiny stitches. So here I have the Millie blanket. It's a blanket I made for my cousin's daughter. And this is the fabric I'm going to be using to line the back of it. I'm putting on the side a list of some other materials you'll need for this. It kind of depends on the process you use. I highly recommend watching the entire video first and then figuring out uh, what methods you want to use. So the very first step in this process is to block and measure your blanket. Now this is really important because often a blanket will start out one size after you finish crocheting it, but as those stitches loosen, as it gets washed a few times, they will stretch out. And we need that blanket to go ahead and get stretched out now so that we can make sure that our liner matches it. Now this is really easy. Just lay your blanket out and then spray it down with some water until it's lightly damp. Again, pull it, stretch it a little bit, make sure that it's nice and squared and straightened out, and then just allow it to dry. It is just really important to let those stitches loosen up and that it would go ahead and get stretched out. We are gonna take some other precautions against stretching later, but this is just an important step for now. So then the next thing we're going to do is we are going to actually measure out our blanket because now that we've stretched it out, the measurements have probably changed. I am measuring my blanket here and one of the things I'm going to tell you is my blanket is 30 by 31 inches in between the border. I am not going to line the border, I'm going to line on the inside of the border kind of in this uh, white border stitch that I did. I did a row of single crochet before I started my border and I, my goal is to stitch right across that. Now I can tell you that my stitches are 30 by 31 but I want to make sure I cut my fabric to be 33 inches by 34 inches and I will explain why a little bit later but the reason you need to know now is so that you know how big of fabric you need to purchase. So our very next step is to buy our fabric. I like to buy flannel because it's so soft but you could also use a cotton to back this. I definitely recommend not buying anything that has a lot of stretch to it as that is difficult to sew. Also, when you buy your fabric, you want to make sure you buy it wider and taller than you actually need because the very next step we're going to do is to wash the fabric. You just want to put it in a wash bag so that it doesn't get tossed around too much. But the reason that we wash our fabric is to pre-shrink it. Some fabrics will shrink in the wash. So I like to wash it on whatever settings I would typically put my blanket on. This is here, I would normally do like a warm wash with a medium dry in the dryer. So go ahead and do that. That way, if it's going to shrink, it will shrink now before we cut it. Now I have already washed my fabric and you can see that it's taken on quite a few wrinkles. So the next step after washing is simply to iron the fabric really nicely on both sides so that it lays flat and when we cut it, it's gonna cut as evenly as possible. Then of course the last thing we're going to do to prep our fabric is to cut it to size. Now remember we are cutting it three inches wider and three inches taller than what we measured on our blanket. So you'll just cut this to size and we'll be ready to start pinning it to our blanket. So now the next step in our process is actually really simple but what we're going to do is down two sides of our fabric we are going to iron down our seam allowance. Now what I did is I'm using a half inch seam allowance and I cut out a long half inch piece of cardstock and that is just going to be a little tool for me to fold down that seam allowance and get it ironed in place. So I'll just fold it down and then I will use my hot iron to iron that in place. 
And I'm going to do this down two sides. And the reason for this is that as we have been playing with our blanket, moving it around, ironing things, we tend to stretch the blanket even more. So the reason we did three inches extra, so one inch extra would give us enough for our seam allowance, but those extra two inches are to kind of compensate for any possible stretching that we've done. So go ahead and iron down your seam allowance for two sides. We'll pin those in place and then we'll worry about the other two sides in a little bit as we're sewing. When you're ironing down your corners, you're just going to iron down one side and then go and iron down the other side. And then you're going to go back up to that corner and just tuck it in so it is folded at an angle. So we'll pull our piece out here, go back to that corner, and just fold it in just a little bit so it has a nice angle there and you're just going to iron it there. That just keeps that corner tucked in and has no chance of flipping out while we're sewing. So now that we got those two edges ironed down, it's time to go ahead and pin them to our blanket. Now, a lot of times you're going to think of sewing and you're going to think of using straight pins and that works. But what I've actually used in the past is safety pins. This is something my grandmother always used when we were sewing quilts together because you were moving them around so much, the chances are your pins were going to fall out and they won't fall out if they're safety pins. So just take your fabric, line up the corners that are ironed, place them exactly where you want them, and then start using safety pins to put them in place. Again, you can use straight pins, just be careful because if those fall to the ground and you step on them, they hurt. So you just use your safety pins and start pinning in one corner. And I like to place a safety pin about every five inches. It also really helps because this is such a thick fabric. It just helps to hold everything in place when you're working with safety pins. So just run along the edge here. And about every five inches, just add a safety pin. So I know what you're thinking, why am I seeing a new project here? Well, it's basically because when I was working on that blanket, I only cut my fabric one inch wider and taller than what I wanted on my blanket. I didn't cut this extra three inches. And what ended up happening was the blanket ended up stretching more and I fell short on fabric. So I'm going to use this piece here to show you why I recommend the extra three inches. So here I went ahead and I pinned down those two sides. Now I'm going to pin the third side, one that I have not ironed. And with having those extra three inches, I am just going to fold it in as much as needed to make it fit the fabric. And as long as you don't have a super light colored see-through fabric, that extra fabric in there is not going to be a big deal. But the important thing is not even just now, but later while you're sewing, it is possible that your blanket's going to get stretched out a little bit more and having this extra fabric is going to be a lifesaver because ripping seams out of crochet is not a fun process. So you're just going to fold in your pieces on these edges and then you can go ahead and pin these edges. And that is why we did the extra amount on both sides is just to make this process a lot easier and to compensate for any possible stretch during this process. So now I'm just going to pull up my work, get down to the corner. This is actually a bag that you make from a rectangle. So I am lining it before I sew it into a bag. And then I'm going to fold that other area that has, that other side that has the extra three inches on it and fold it in place so that it fits the blanket perfectly. And I'll just pin down the other side and we will be ready to sew. So now that everything is pinned, we are finally ready to sew. And in this situation, we are actually going to sew with the yarn side down. That's why it's important to test your yarn first to make sure it's not going to snag. Also something to know is when you lift your presser foot, you can lift it up and then you can push it and it will actually come up 
even further here. So that will really help you to push a bulky fabric like what we're working with right now under your presser foot. So our goal here is to actually sew about an eighth of an inch from the edge of our fabric. So very, very close to the edge of the fabric. And the best way to do this is to go really slow. Um, it's just better to do it right because it's not fun to rip a seam out of crochet. I'm not sure if I said that enough, but you just wanna follow the edge of your border. If you're going in, on the inside of the border, go around your fabric very carefully. So we're just going to sew as slow as you can. I tend to have a lead foot for this, but I'm trying to go nice and slow until you reach your corner. When you reach the corner, you're going to actually stick your needle down into your fabric and then turn your work. And the other thing I wanna mention is you want to start with the two sides that only have a half of an inch turned under because then if you come across any trouble later, you can again adjust that edge of the fabric so it fits your blanket. So another problem you may come across is you may run out of either your top thread or your bobbin thread. If this happens, all you're gonna do is first replace those threads so that you can continue sewing. And then you're gonna go back about an inch or two over the seam that you just did. And you're gonna sew over that area a second time and that's gonna help lock everything in place. So I just did this right at the corner. So I'm gonna sew over that seam about an inch, come to my corner, again, push my needle down into the fabric and turn at the corner and then continue down the other side. Again, slow and steady. It's kind of a do what I say, not as what I do because I am using my knee here and I tend to have a lead knee, it seems like. So the slower you can work with your stitches, the much cleaner of a stitch you're gonna have along that edge. Now, if you get to the two sides that have extra fabric, go ahead and kind of lay out your blanket a little bit on your, while it's still attached to your machine, make sure everything is laying flat because you do have those extra inches to go ahead and adjust as you need to. So if the blanket did stretch out as you were sewing one side, you still have extra fabric to adjust that. So here I am coming up to the very end. And again, when you get to the end of your blanket, just like when we had to restart our seam over, we are just gonna go over that very last corner. We're gonna turn that corner and go over about an inch of the other seam that we've made. So this is my last corner here. I'm just gonna slowly approach the corner, put my needle down into the fabric, turn my work, and then just sew another inch to kind of lock in that stitching right at the end. So I'm just sewing another inch or so, and then I will take my blanket off of my sewing machine. And there you can see the seam I've made. I think it looks really nice. And if you look on the other side, you can barely see the stitching on the crocheted side. So that's why I like to do a sewing machine. I think it's, once you get the hang of it, I think it's very, very quick. So now the last thing we need to do is just clip our threads and our blanket will be done. And there you have a beautiful blanket that is lined in a pretty flannel. So I hope you liked this tutorial. It was a new different type of tutorial for me, but definitely something that was highly requested. So I hope this at least gave you some tips and tricks that you'll be able to use in order to make your own blanket. And as always, thank you so much for watching.